hey, welcome to Tell Us Like It Is. And if I've got this smile from ear to ear, I've got very good reason and you'll figure. But it's a show in which we, we chat with people and get to know the person behind the personality. You know, I once read a little quote that says, if you're doing anything creative, don't care too much about what people around you have to say. But it was in Urdu, Brian. I'm not introduced oh, you sorry. yet. So, see you know what I mean? Oh, do we have four hours for the show? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to point out it sounds better in Urdu, the <laughs> quote. But we shouldn't try it. Urdu or not Urdu? We have one and a half Catholic in <laughs> so we can't even say Tardio. How are we going to manage? Takriban. <laughs> Those big words, challenges for all of us. Sorry to interrupt, but I got bored. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like I was saying, today is going to be a ride. And we have with us today someone you know, wish you didn't, maybe. How do I describe him? TV anchor, funny old man. Sexy would be nice. Uh, sexy might be nice, though it might be untrue. Hey, you figured by now. Member of a political party that used to wear I'm shorts. I'm speaking of Cyrus Brocha. Oh, Cyrus, we all have our problems. I have mine today. Mm -hmm. You know, all of six feet of problems. What are you saying? Yeah. Organ uh, issues, I have them from the last three years. No. You do? Things three are, years? Oh things my are failing, kidding. hairs falling. It's horrible. I don't look in the mirror anymore because I don't but want to know what's what's wrong. It's the like, dye you use and the wig you're it's not, using is it's, quite It's nice. not dye, it's polish. Yeah. 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 The, we lost a lot of money in the pandemic. The jelly just, blossom type? Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking, I have this friend, a young, not young girl, a girl in her 40s. She started this half-half thingy because I have no idea how white my hair really is because of the vanity. And so she said, you should try this where you just put a little bit of uh, hair color and let it be. And th that way you'll get used to the idea that you're going to get white. And then after six months or one year or whatever, you progress in that way. You should write a book about this. I'm glad this is the topic for the day. <laughs> I'm sure people are riveted, taking down notes saying, man, tell us more. Yeah. The hair specialist. Yeah. You know what amazing... Once oh, Punjabi, it's hair specialist. <laughs> so like about Punjabi. No? What hair and hair. What amazes me. I just ask them to say that. I go, I go to Punjabi. Like, just come and say hair. <laughs> Cyrus. What? People tolerate you. No, and not then really. pay you some. Even less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Hmm. Oh, I don't understand that. But now there's lots of talent out there. So there's less work. And hence I'm here. Uh, also because uh, what happened to Johnny Lever who was supposed to be here and then last minute cancelled. Brian called. Uh, we share the same surname on my mother's side as in I have a tell his mother's side name, whatever that means. So he called and said, Roger's come in and uh, do one, take one for the team. And we'll do it quick and fast like I told my wife. And this is where we are. Is that right? Quick That's and fast? Right. And she right. bought it? Well, it's just quick now. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't bought anything. At least you may have to buy some instruments. I'm in my fifties. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could be instrumental, you know, in that. <laughs> Let me know. Really? Yeah. That's that's why. By the way, he's a great entrepreneur. I don't know if he ever talks to you about all the things that he started, because uh, people probably only think of you as the the vo well, my generation will think of you as the voice, the first big voice on uh, radio. Uh, as we got privatized, definitely the first big voice, and then from there, all the events and everything else, and now what? You got a bordello, you run a bar, uh, you got an NGO for one legged donkeys. I mean, all kinds of things. And, yeah. and I hang with Cyrus Brocha. That's just today, bro. He's I never going to call me again. This is it. That's the most difficult thing I continue to do, Cyrus. I, I'm holding on to this couch because I know when I'll come back. Yeah. I'm worried for the couch, but we'll move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us, in spite of being such a loser. <laughs> I mean, so I was like Aisha, my wife's interviewing me. How, yeah. how do you do everything you do, man? You know, this reminds me, uh, and I don't want to brag, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I, MTV sent me, for these HIV AIDS awareness campaigns, I was the brand ambassador for MTV, and I'll explain why. Because uh, Malaika is very sexy, Nikhil was, you know, like the rugged male and all that, and all of them were good looking. So they said, who's the one person no one associates with sex? Me. So they said, you go as the brand ambassador, because it's easy then for you to, you know, get the message across. You know, so it doesn't get distorted into sexuality and all that. So I did that. Anyway, so I got to meet lots of big people, famous people. Uh, Bill Clinton was one of them. So I came back from Barcelona full of myself because I had this great exchange with him, blah, blah, blah. And I remember coming home, a late night flight and all that. And I went and had a bath and uh, then I came up to have dinner, whatever mother, middle class mother would make food at that time for you while your wife slept. And um, so I came up and uh, I remember I said, Mom, Bill Clinton knows my first name. And I remember she looked at me and said, but did you, did you put up the geezer? And I just brought everything down, you know. It's like, you know, you just uh, done. I, I remember thinking, what a loser. You know, really, what a loser. It gets you worse, know? right? It gets worse. Yeah. It gets worse. Yeah, yeah. What about Lalu, Lalu Prasad? The other? Well, his story was, you know, the thing with Lalu is, and he's, well, Lalu ji, if you watch this, first, he speaks English. He's an LLB. And he has a Bihari accenter. 
but he speaks english properly so i of course with my broken hindi was trying to talk to him first and he refused to speak back in hindi and then he would ask me a question which i could not answer he said ye mtv kya hai what is a mtv and what is mtv i have no idea i mean how do you answer that so i said sorry a music channel it's a music channel can you so he looks at me for a minute and he says ah music and he sang some kl saigal song for 8 minutes one really you know one of those aasman upar zameen niche mera pair khali hai mera gaan piche whatever sorry excuse my french and and, and we all looking at each other because we're in patna in the chief minister's house he is the sitting chief minister there's security and chumchas and me and ragu from the roadies yeah. who was the producer and three four other mtv boys we're standing there and we can't cut him and then they're looking at me and ragu like ragu the great you know yeah. fighter on uh, roadies is with his finger one inch movement like to cut lalu i said you cut lalu i know what the boss bahut ho gaya mere ko baat karne ka bhi so i had to listen for 8 minutes he sang and sang and not the most gifted singer but yeah whatever so listen that, you can't be complaining about him not being the most gifted singer yeah please so well, I, i can hold a note You only heard me singing when I'm drunk and misbehaving, Baba. You see me early morning. Spend the night with me, Brian. Wake up with Listen, me. Listen, hold my hand, it. comfort me, kiss it, me, it, caress me, <laughs> braid my hair. That's what I'm worried about. That's <laughs> what I'm worried about. Which is why meeting midday. Yeah. Is it midday? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought you were times. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, you know, that was. That's a bright oh, moment. I give you a bright moment. It was a bright moment. And then it gets worse, like I said. <laughs> yeah, and then it gets worse. Yeah. Sheila Dixit, I believe, is a really good friend of yours. Oh, um, passed away. Uh, the thing is, uh, Sheila Dixit's story is that again for HIV, uh, we went to Thailand to Bangkok for this huge conference, and Richard Gere and all these people were there. So the plane, I was on the same plane with her. There was some thirty Congress. She was a sitting chief minister, uh, and I had luck with chief ministers then. Pre two thousand and fourteen, they would talk to me, and so we got into the plane together. And but she had these ten security guards and all that, and PA's and all that. But once we entered, they put me in business class also. She was sitting next to me, and all these guys disappeared. And Brian, I couldn't believe this was like talking to my own mom. She was so sweet, and she was worried for me because I looked like a bola guy, and I hate traveling. Looked and I was like. worried, and I told her all my problems. MTV sending me there, but I don't even know the hotel name. You know, the usual thing. And I don't, know, I didn't have a mobile phone, so I was ex- explaining to her all my problems. And we started talking and chatting, and she was like comforting me and telling. And then she told me all kinds of stories. I was very impressed with her. I had a great time, I must say. She was in, was she impressed with you? I think she just looked at me as an NGO or something, you know, that she had to look after for the <laughs> plane ride. But she was really nice. Yeah, no, I believe you know, so. You know, very maternal and very sophisticated. Spoke perfect English. We discussed literature, history, all kinds of things. And you know, I mean, I I came, I just had a new idea because you have a wrong you know, information about some of these guys and stereotypes about some of these the guys. The smile on my face is because you said you all were discussing literature. And speaking well, in, you know, in in English. Okay, so maybe a bit high for me, but it was okay for her. What I was trying to say, I used to act. Yeah, I was just remember names. You know, this is Bernard Shaw, Shah, yeah. huh, whatever. Yeah. Your your wife is Kunal, right? Uh, it's not allowed. Supreme Court uh, said no, so I will not go against the law <laughs> of the land. And I just want to say, uh, firstly, I've got nothing against homosexuality. I'm all for it. Uh, not because of a sense of egalitarianism. I just believe that if there's more homosexuality, the heterosexuals will have a better market. Right, because you're eating up more men. To do the maths there, more men get eaten up that side. Less men this side. We go for the ladies. Never doubted your intelligence. Never. This is did. why I could have been the Klopp of my time. Put me on a field, and I can tell you how to get more defense and more attack immediately. I'm very good at strategy. Yeah. All I've done is praise myself. Yeah, yeah. And you call me a loser. This is this is just like me and my wife sitting around. Loser because no one believes you. Yeah, nobody cares. No one's going to listen to this. Don't worry. Okay. They wait for your next guest. So hmm. I don't know. We can get any more serious than yeah. you know than we are at the moment. No, no. Ask me anything. But, but want to know about the whole professional career side? Seriously. Oh, that's painful. No, I'll go for it. <laughs> that I, that I is serious. I want that pain to accentuate. It's, so. it's like a cancer. It's yeah, no, getting no. worse and worse. Great. I'm yeah. hoping you succumb. Horrible, but horrible metaphor. I apologize. Till such time, yeah. <laughs> as you succumb to the cancer, so tell I, us about it. Now, um, it's a bit of a cliche now for me, but. Uh, I honestly, I should have done law. My dad was a lawyer. Uh, my grandfather. Gary. Him. Well, Gary is not really a lawyer. A good joke, but Gary, in fact, should not be at a, around a, a court. A poor chap. He's a very much a biker who sings. You know, I mean, if you've met him. Because And he's a dear friend. All, all he sure. says, Brian, is, "Sir, it's my bike here. You know, I'm worried if I can park it here." I'm just <laughs> Gary. Because he's moved into my neighborhood, and he has an open garage, so he's worried that people will touch his 10,000 cc bike. I'm saying these are all young Gujarati boys who don't care about bikes. Don't worry, they're all in Dalal Street in five minutes. There's no bike culture. You're not in Bandra. You don't worry or Kulaba. Those are bike areas. I try to explain to him. Just listen. Gary, okay. you worry too much. On to serious stuff like yeah. your professional career. Yeah, I got ADD. You have to keep guiding me back. Yeah, yeah. You be my German shepherd. I'm a blind guy. Yeah. Guess what I'm doing? Yeah. Guess what I'm yeah. doing? 
Yeah, so where were we? Uh, yeah, so, no, so I was doing, well, to cut a long story short, I did a play called Brighton Beach Memoirs when I was 14 years old. Got a taste of um, theatre. And at that time, English theatre was quite uh, robust. I don't know if it still is, because there was all kinds of things, stand up and all was eaten into it and uh, whatever. But that was on. And so I had a taste of that. And then post-college, I went back, did some more plays. I did Godspell, where the uh, Christian community got very upset with us because we had a fat Jesus, Mr. Bhag Bhargava Krishna. Well, to be honest, Pearl asked him to lose a little weight, but no De Niro. <laughs> a few butter chickens later and lots of tender coconuts. See, you know, I mean, we couldn't carry him onto the cross. You know, 15 minutes is the carry. <laughs> no disrespect, but it was really horrible. I was in the middle of all that. Because, yeah, I brought you the young guy. You hold. I was 17 years old holding my balls with one hand, you know, because Bugs is huge. And Bugs is the other. Yeah, yeah, Sharia Ratai and all, all pretending. They're real actors, you know. Um, the hands are, they do the whole act of holding someone, but there's no holding. <laughs> the guy at the back, it's like Govinda. There's one guy who's actually screwed. You take all the pressure. So they put me in that middle position where he he basically, it's in that trust thing you do. He falls back on me and I'm holding him and then we got to move him to the cross, literally, which is on our barrel and all that. Wasn't easy. Ah, we look at the guy called Izo Vivan Matthews, who was the smallest guy. I was thinking, why can't we change? Change Jesus. Yes. <laughs> not the actor, but the piece. We've got one community that's not up in arms. Can you <laughs> calm down? You know? <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, again, we got distracted. So that was theatre. No, so, so I got a taste of all that. And then I was surrounded by like Mohan Kapoor, Bugs, uh, Keith Stevenson, uh, who else? Uh, Ronnie Screwball. All these guys were around, right? So they were all in this, uh, Alec, all in this double profession of advertising. And so while I, Kept my law uh, seat, uh, the government law college. So I went to sleep six to nine. Then I went to Dakunya's and I would work there with Kunal and uh, Sylvie. I had right. Sylvie. Oh, Sylvie. man. Sylvie was great. So Sylvie would, uh, in the morning, be very strict and not smile. And uh, he took 15 minutes to get to the point. So he would be like, ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus. And then, you know, get to the point. Uh, but he'd have four drinks at the yacht club between one and two. And he'd come back. Unbelievable. He was like Shami Kapoor when he came back. He was a different guy. He would be whistling tunelessly. He'd be singing, really bad singer. And he would come right next to you. And I remember I, there was one book called uh, uh, Rajputs by Henry Todd. And being a copywriter, that's all you do. You read the book. They have one book, so you read it. Uh, I know everything about Rajputs. So I'm reading that and he, he would just suddenly over friendly because he's a little drunk. He'd come and say, Rajputs, right, lovely, lovely group. <laughs> just walk away and you would agree he's the boss if he said bad group I'd still have to say yes yeah. so yeah it was fun so that was advertising so that was advertising it worked career. with the theatre thing because they would allow us to go for rehearsals and all there were lots of girls around some of the men were gay like I mentioned before so the market increased for me uh, and Kunal we should have been but we weren't we are straight um, Yala? well we tried it mm. Brian didn't work then. he's not flexible right <laughs> Picture of Kunal. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so we're doing all that, and then, um, then, then your thing happened. My thing radio ninety three FM. You know, how do I? I we're like dinosaurs, man. Ninety three August fifteenth. Come on, help me. FM launch. Brand was the face of it, and uh, so we did. We had that seven thirty to uh, seven. No, you were seven to seven eight. to eight uh, patch. Yeah, radio and stars. I was, I was nine to. You nine were the you were the cream patch. We were the <laughs> the whatever. What are the fluffers called in pornography? <laughs> the, the guy who gets the guy erect. So we did that, 7 to 8. Then I think, oh, Michal, the baritone was 8 yeah. to 9, if I remember. They came in a little later though. Yeah, but Michal... Midday, right? Midday was... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right And then midday. you guys had the cream. But, uh, so that was the first taste of uh, something more, which reached a larger audience. And from there, I got called, I think, for by MTV back in 96. And also by Channel V, because they obviously had the same right. five guys scouting. <laughs> and so while MTV was not reverting back to me, Channel V sent me to Hong Kong. Uh, because they had this uh, course you have to do and learn everything. Like you've learned how to be a producer and all that. Me, huh? I can't press this camera. I wouldn't talk. Don't even start. But luckily for me, in Hong Kong, I was lonely and sad. Um, the guy called Amir Hussein, this is such a long story. He got jaundice, not because of me, but because of Hong Kong. And he went off to Canada where he lives. And so they sent me back till he's okay. And then I have to go back and learn under his tutelage. He's a great man. I have no idea what he does with his life now. <laughs> Maybe he's a minister in the cabinet in Canada because they're all Indian names. And uh, yeah, so that's it. And then I came back and then I, MTV called me again. And there was an Italian-American guy called uh, Vinny Longobardo. I love the name. And Vinny came on the phone and said, Hey, Cyrus, come to Albro. I'm going to meet you. We're going to talk. I want to hear more about you. I'm really interested. So I went and looked for the, I, so no mobile phone. I'm in my shorts. I'm looking for this Italian-American. 
and a stereotype. So I'm thinking Al uh, Pacino is going to be, you know, pulling out from yeah. somewhere, you know. Oh, it's Don Corleone, you know. Yeah. And then so I got to this guy who was a dark hair and a shiny suit. And I said, look at his shoes. Shiny shoes. Sicilian for me. So I made him Sicilian, by the way. He was straight away. Yeah, he's gone straight into that. Yeah. So here I am in my soprano squad and all. And I got this guy and I say, Winnie, Cyrus. So he says, Was? Was is that? It was a German guy. <laughs> and I was most unhappy to see a small Indian man coming and approaching him like that at the opera. And then there's this guy with a ponytail who looked like one of these hippies from the 60s. He springs up shorter than me. A uh, lovely guy. And so he, we hit it off. And the next thing I know, I'm working with MTV. Working is a stretch, whatever we did. Yeah. How, how did they survive? You know, honestly, it was hard the first two years. I remember going to uh, DAV Chandigarh to shoot, for example. You have to explain to the principal who we are. So we're sitting with the principal, uh, Haan ji, kone? Uh, uh, Sir, we are from him. And of course, my producers, uh, all of them get scared to talk. So I do the talking. Uh, and I shouldn't be doing the talking. I'm just signing them with a small crew and you can't leave the guy outside. So I said, Sir, we are MTV, a music channel, but you also do education. And that's why we have education and music together. Uh, and so someone came up with the idea, edu edutainment. Well, entertainment is a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's getting angry about grammar. All, all the while speaking in Punjabi to us. And this went on for about five minutes. So then we, he allowed us to shoot. We went down, we we're shooting, and there were lovely kids and girls and all that. So I must have been asking my puerile questions like, what color underwear do you like? What do you ask? It's an MTV campus show. So I'm asking them that. The word, so this guy comes down, he grabs the camera himself. No. And, yeah. It was like a push and shove going on and all that. And the kids love it. I ran. I didn't take a chance. Yeah, so it was really hard for us. Nobody knew who we were. I know. So we had two great years like that, and then the distribution improved, and then people started knowing who we were. And you know, I missed the first two years. It was so much fun. No permission, permission denied. Can't get it here. Get out of there. <laughs> it you was had great. a tough life. Huh? It was hard life. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep admiration. There was a lot of pain, a lot of angst. Yeah. 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 My Careful. goodness, how you survive? You must be an inspiration to millions. Not yeah. one person has ever called up and said, "I like you." No. <laughs> it's been so many years. But then again, full marks for honesty, right? Yeah. Well, you can't lie when you admirable. live this life. Admirable. Yeah. admirable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyrus, I love you even more than yeah. I did <laughs> right. when you were bare chested and, you know, and. and See, and, blind sarcasm for me is truth now. I don't bother, you know, it's okay. So people can say what they want. Water on a duck's back. I don't care. As long as you don't give me vegetarian food. Did you say now? You know, it's taking me a few years it to adjust to it. Was. I would go home and cry and all that. Oh, you were. And my mother would say, is the geezer still on? Yeah, <laughs> that's a funny Beautiful one. thing about parents. You that's know, a you funny know. one. You know, I used to, at the height of MTV, I didn't have a mobile phone till my 40s, okay? The height of MTV, if I went drinking, I would still call my middle class house at 12 in the night to report that I'm running late. From a PCO. Okay, so the guys would, they would, I would be so, I would be like, the, like a duffer in the group. But my brocha, where are you going? I have to find a phone. Why? I would tell my mom, I'm, we're running late. She's 27, 31, 35. It became really embarrassing, but I still did it. Not bad, no? Yeah. yeah now, now try to get in touch with my son who's in Canada. Not now, dad. WhatsApp, that's it. <laughs> no, no, good time. And I know Liverpool lost, so I leave him alone. With the two days of, you know, pain there. So, you know, every time I keep checking Liverpool. And Liverpool just going on losing now. You my know? son's a Liverpool person oh, as well. Oh, shit, these kids. <laughs> uh, just leave Man U and Liverpool alone. There's so many nice clubs out there, no? What do we have to suffer because you can't choose properly? Even Man U, huh? Yeah, Man U he hates. It's India, Pakistan. So, he's a Liverpool lover and Man U hater. Listen, besides the comments... So, that 7-0, uh, since we've recorded this uh, towards the end of the football season, the 7-0 was a, was a day to call in. Immediately. You're like, Dad, what's up? Everything's great, you know, like, suddenly the world's a better place. But they've had a good run. Okay. Till then, till this year. Huh? Now that we've had a really intelligent conversation yeah. about Which your is professional so scattered. career. Yeah. I, I, I want to get to know the, you know, the growing up years outside of the professional side. So, you know, the growing up years has also, you know, people make mistakes. Your wife made her mistake of marrying you. The kids. Tell us a little bit about it. Come on, Cyrus. Uh, the kids are adopted. Um, my wife won't let me touch her, and rightly so. Uh, my wife, I met my wife, I've again told this story a hundred times, a true story. I have a couple of things about me, if you really want to know about me, is I have, people ask me, do when do you get really angry? So the two areas I get angry, I get really angry in the gym, because I can't stand people with gloves. I can't stand people who come and work out and lie down on the floor with, with a mat, okay, in a weight room. So those are uh, some little uh -huh. hardcore, and I get irritated. But I get irritated, it's irritating, right? Because you're deadlifting, and a guy puts a thing behind you like he's doing a reverse namaz or something. And he's hanging around there. I'm like, you get up at 6 in the morning, you come here and you lie on your back and you do something like this, like you're pregnant. <laughs> what the hell? And I can't move properly. I have to now look behind and front, all that. So that's why. And the other thing is punctuality. So I really have a problem with that. Anyway, 
So I was doing copy when I came back from America. I was doing uh, trying to make some money while studying law and working in advertising or whatever. I was trying to do some freelance copying like we all do. And I got this Anubhav Teak Farms a pal of mine gave me a, a, as a gig. So I had to write the copy and he said, get a visualizer and you know, create this whole content. So I, he, I told him, can you recommend girls because I want to work with men. I know it sounds creepy, but I was 22, 23. I don't want to sit for a whole night with some guy. And, uh, not to be uh, get into the ethnicities of all this, but the visualizers in Mumbai, you know, I mean, it's not like a glamorous, you know, hot chick from South Bombay. You know, it's going to be one of those, you know, so I said, what any have you girl. got against the chicks? No, no, what North I mean is the, guy, the, the males, the males. <laughs> so I, 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 look, come on, don't, don't hold me, don't hold this against me. It's, you know, it's fair, right? I won't hold anything against yeah. you. Well, not again, at least. So <laughs> <laughs> I have worked with Fountainhead. It's not been easy. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so uh, he gives me three numbers and this is a true story. And I called the first number. I think her name was Dipti or Deepa or something with D. And the mother says, Dipti nahi hai, whatever, uh, call later. So that's gone. The second, the, because she had no idea who I was, she started stammering and stuttering. I said, can we meet? Uh, we've got this, there's money involved, whatever. We'll figure it out. I need to meet and present, you know, tell you what it's all about. But she was very skeptical. I sounded creepy. She, she, there was no, I couldn't use this guy's name. She barely remembered who this guy was. And so it just didn't work. Third person was, I, I turned out to be Aisha. So I uh, told her, whatever, she agreed to meet. And I said, uh, so she said, where? So I said, can you come to Hanging Gardens? We had this Nas cafe near my house in the old days. And uh, she said, but how will I know who you are? So I said, it's very simple. I'll be in short pants and there's a German shepherd with me. So she said, but how do I know it's you? So I said, what are the chances? This is stupid. Who says this? That there'll be two men in short pants, with a, both with German shepherd, five feet away from each other. And Nas, I mean, I mean, great. This is the, I should, yeah, I, that's why I married her. I mean, it's horrible. The experience of like, I couldn't believe somebody who asked this question. Like, why? How can you have a duplicate in, in the same place with exactly the same, you know? Anyway, uh, 7 o'clock was the time. Uh, 7 to 7.20, I waited there. 7.21, I walked back with my dog. And I reached home and about quarter to eight, a phone call comes from a PCO in Sofia saying that I'm running late and I'll be there in 10 minutes. I said, no, it's too late. I'm not going back. Horrible woman, you know. And, and Pricey guy. Pricey guy. But 7 know. is 7. There was no mobile phone then, so we didn't have that option. But no, never on time. So these all these things were red flags and I still married her. So then go on. But you haven't heard her side. So <laughs> then how did you all kind of, you know, patch huh? this disagreement or but, disappointment? But, as the ladies will tell you, once you take my clothes off, Brian, yeah. lights out. Why ladies? Even men. <laughs> Even men. Which men? Me. <laughs> you. Uh, okay, we did one podcast. Let me explain. I don't know. <laughs> I wish you could play a clip of that. Then he'll, he'll set it up. Because uh, we got Brian on our podcast. And unfortunately, I had to do it in Alibag. Because the pandemic was on and this, that and the other. So, cut a long story short. The Where the Wi-Fi works properly is the middle, middle part of the huge house that we have. And so I had to take the shirt off because it's too hot. So think about me. Deal. Yeah. Think about me, Saris. You know, I'm getting ready to have this yeah. chat. Uh, Brian never, you're always elegant. I, I can't remember you badly dressed. Yeah. Brian probably goes, uh, you probably go to play football wearing long pants now. You know, one of those guys, <laughs> the belt and all that. Yeah. This program starts and you know, hey. And I look at this man. Gorgeous body. Minus any clothing on the top half, at least I couldn't see the bottom half. No, I, just, I was wearing my underwear. That yeah. box the unfortunate shorts. thing was Cyrus Brocha's face was attached to the body. But then again, hey, you know, you can't have everything going your way. Well, to be honest, we started as radio jockeys. <laughs> yeah, so we, we weren't prepared for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. Good, good voices. Who? I, like, I spoke to Sharad Kilkar yesterday on our podcast. You know him? He's a famous actor now yeah. and voiceover artist. He's the deepest voice I've heard in a long time. Bro, I thought it was a put on, but you speak for one hour or close to that and it never dropped. It was like really deep. It was two notes lower than a pig, you know. It was like... Vroom, vroom. <laughs> I, I asked him, I said, bro, and do you know the funny thing? Like Amitabh Bachchan, he was rejected by AIR. Is that right? With a voice like that. He said, no, but I was stammering. Forget stammering, you got a voice like that. If you are rejected by AIR... You're a hero. You're damn Were you? sure. Yeah. No way. No, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. But if you are rejected oh, by AIR... Guys, you know himself, guys. You heard pick that one. Uh, didn't drop the ball on that one, did he? Hey, honestly. Amitabh honest. Bachchan and Shalom Kilkar, they could yeah. make the cut. Yeah. I mean, That's it. true. Brian, you're, you are, you will be. I when they write the book, you'll be at the top book. I, got, you radio can't take that away. I got radio stories about All India Radio. Yeah. So I would never apply yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, on the Studers, uh. you know, I was playing it live. Obviously, I was one of the first. Yeah. Suckers. You just carry your CDs and all. Yes. Yeah. And um, one of the programs, the CD player was misbehaving, right? You know, you kind of uh, locked in Elton John. Yeah, and, you think. And you go, hey, you here's a bit of Elton John and Rod yeah. Stewart. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, so I don't fun. think you understand that, but it's so much fun because it's a lottery. 
back in the 90s was the lottery but my story is even yeah, funny sorry yeah so i go to the duty officer and i go nice guy i go yeah. hey you know what i messed up man you know i have had to apologize thrice on air today and i'd get these you know yeah. messages from everyone yeah. mishal and the gang saying yeah. oh you apologized thrice today yeah. you know kind of thing so he said what kya hua beta kya hua so i took him to the studio because the news would come in from delhi at that time and so you had 15 minutes so he takes me to the studio and he says yeah what happened so i you know i put the tray out and i put my cd and i'm not even shut the tray and saying boss mujhe pata hai what the problem is so i said man he says a cd jo hai na hmm. the writing has to face you so turn the cd and now it won't happen really specific angle you think you're clever you think your clever my story sir? may be better than that one because we had a seven o'clock live polo dial in show seven seven yeah and uh, we used to come to ar by about 6:45 we were there on time waiting one day the pun didn't turn up he came in at 7:10 but he comes in with the with thing and i'm like there's the jitin him there screaming and he's uh, already start ho gaya live show hai he's paid for it and all and to kya hai wo catch up karega log catch up exact line catch up karega log i was like wow the bindas philosophy of these guys i mean they can't see the pressure and whatever the so called they kill the passion in you know <laughs> I I learned so much from them. And with no effort, I didn't have fault. And effort. there was no malice. Sir. He was not being mean or whatever. Yeah, he was actually giving his philosophy to us too, so that we can calm down. It was Zen-like moment. Oof. You know, but I held on to the nicest things. Hmm. You finish your program. You you torn hair out of yeah. your head, but you come down and the vada pao outside. But we, uh, he wasn't oh, there. Oh, you were stylish. Seven, you were no, stylish. seven in the morning. The guy would come in at about seven thirty eight. Ah. Our problem is we're so early. We would get the dudh wala. But right. then what's the point interrupting him yeah, on right. his morning? Yeah. No, but then you missed out on something. The kanda bajias. Oh, I'm a South Bombay boy. I eat in every. I still eat. I'm one of those guys who I love the road food. Was it cheaper? So I, I, I love my kalakata. I love all this. You're man. speaking like me. I'm the mangi in the pack. I know oh, we share a common surname. I think it's a generational thing yeah. that we just like our street food. <laughs> no, my kids don't. Listen, you know. Don't be harsh on yourself. You're not that. I know. They are Scott. Do you think he goes? Do you have sandwiches from the road and stuff? Lying bastard! <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> yeah, you can. Sure, he's got so bad for one. What's going to? Yeah. As if these guys are going to go anywhere. Pop's going to pay for fucking a cheese sandwich. Two hundred and ninety bucks will be a basic toast with cheese on it. I mean, yeah. come on. It's something. Uh, some of the bail puri from the road, for example. My mom. I mean, I just get everything. They couldn't make it. It just tastes like crap. Yeah. But he goes to the road guy, and it's just fantastic. And I just this is a sign. Somebody should explain why it, is it better. It's still my go-to plan. Okay. Yeah. Every to other, be a bail puri. Yeah. So the first Catholic bail wala in India will be. I'll yeah. come for that. Hey, brother, pass me that danger. Hey, brother, fuck it, injure long end. Go ahead, put it on, put it on, pass. It'll be fun, no? How? How? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have no friends. Listen, listen. Oh. If you like where my career is going and you want to, allow... hey, shall I tell him how much money you made? Don't talk like that. So how fair. much? God, how much money you made? <laughs> Wait, he will be the last to know. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of work, what's the day like at home? Oh, work I hate. I do very little work. Uh, so I get up at four to four forty sharp, and uh, the dogs Peter and Mary they shout, "Let's go!" We go, off we go. We pee and urinate and shit. Not me, but sometimes me also. And it's great because uh, we just have a couple of doodwalas in the morning and uh, one guy cleaning a car. Not much. It's it's great at that time. I love that time, uh, and I get an idea of the weather also. So I could be a meteorologist because yesterday we were recording this when we were recording. There was rain. And I was able to pick up the rain because I could smell it at four forty-five in the morning. There was a change in the weather a little bit, and I knew that. So when I came to the gym a little late, I told the boys, you know, it's going to rain. Forty-five minutes later, it's pouring. Oh, Who's the king? Man, Tony Montana. Oh, Say hello to my little friend. Hmm? Say hello to my little friend. No, no, I <laughs> pointed here. He's Akash, you're here, na, piche. He's Cuban, huh? <laughs> okay, Punjabi mother screwed up his life. <laughs> you are speaking dog. Akash. <laughs> You've yeah. taken the dogs out. You've brought them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now what five fifty. So that story, let me then. tell you, because I'm uh, fighting a, a battle with the VIP culture of India and the fascism that the police uh, bared on us during pandemic. I was so against it. Me and my wife were the only people who didn't clap or hit burthens or you know. I mean, this you nonsense. Did? I didn't. I refused. That's I, terrible. My neighbors. Up, they, didn't they tell to shut the lights for nine seconds or nine minutes yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. We were watching Netflix. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was not a good time. How much is Netflix paying you for that? <laughs> You're right. I shouldn't give promote them boot. Yeah. <laughs> you won't buy boot, would you? <laughs> you know what rhymes with boot? <laughs> no, we don't go there. <laughs> the client gone. You... <laughs> the client gone. <laughs> yeah. So uh, where were we? Yeah. So I, I so I used to walk my dogs at six uh, in the morning, normally on normal days or whatever. 
Actually, my dad started falling sick. He was the morning walker. I was a night walker. Then the world changed. So anyway, so I moved it to 4.45 because I found that was the time no cops were out. So I could walk in peace without fighting with them. They were actually shouting. Doggy go under. You know, the logic of the cop, I had a fight. Uh, my wife only hit one. It was that bad. Because with the loudspeaker, they under lena, kutta ko under lena, and making a big spectacle out of it and things like that. And so we explained to them that dogs cannot pee in their ilaka. It's just against their nature. They need to go a little outside. So we have to bring them outside the building. Nay, garpe karne do. But I said, don't you understand that garpe mein nay karega? So he said, nay, garpe karega. I said, nay, garpe karega. Nay, upaiga garpe mein. Nay, nay. Karne do. So this is the logic, you know. I mean, they do, what do you do with these people? And then other people say, you're, you know, you're not being sensitive to their own plight, you know. But I felt they were bullies. I felt there was too much bullying going on, really, honestly, with all types. And with the lower classes of society, it was even worse. So I think we should be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. If there's a pandemic or anything else, we cannot become a police state, whatever happens. Brian will lead us and lead us to the promised land, Australia. The speech is over? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, Mike, do you want to go back to what happens after you bring the dogs home? Oh, shit. We're only at 4.45 in the morning. Wow. <laughs> we'll be back with the next episode uh, on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so then I, then I go to the gym. Um, and then I, buy, I go to the gym by under six. And we illeg illegally open it. And then we work out and we eat breakfast. And then we leave shower. And you make friends who are with people who put There's four or five of us. Max and... No, those guys irritate me, man. It's like racism, autism. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm like a gym Nazi now, misbehaving all the time. Because I can't bear them. I mean, you walk over an old lady to get to the dumbbells and all, you know. I mean, it's, it's like, I mean really, is that right? There's something wrong with that picture, no? Yeah. You can't just lie down anywhere. Then you just lie down. They put the mat and just lie down. You know, it's just, I can't understand the culture. I mean, you get up, you brush your teeth, you look at the time, you rush to the gym, and then you lie down. <laughs> something wrong with the picture, bro. Yeah. And then I'm off to wherever little work I have, and that's it. Unfortunately, I have to keep coming to the suburbs now. I might as well have lived here. Uh, this feel is really... the place to be. I think Bandit would have been perfect, but now I can't afford it. Do you, do you have a daughter? Oh, you liar. There's no daughter, right, Scott? Damn it. You should be looking for grandmothers, bro. Cha. Well, grandmother's somebody's daughter. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's hey, bro, don't get, play that age card on me. Huh? Because you and me, I know you're a little older, but now we're in that batch of, like, you know, we're in the same batch, finally. Can't get out of it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us, you know, about about who you are and and why you are? I what I'm grateful, eternally grateful for is they they smashed the mold after making you. Oh, oh they, can you imagine this world with? So you believe in a pantheon Cyrus of gods? Approaches. Huh? What happened? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, there's a Cyrus Sauka. There's a Cyrus Oshida. We had four Cyruses in MTV for a little while. There's another guy who was working in marketing. Oshidar was our boss, you know yeah, him, yeah, yeah. famous creative guy, Saukar, uh, arguably the most talented guy I've worked with, uh, with Wigs. Um, yeah, so we were four Cyruses, you oh. think of a small community of whatever, 50, 60,000, out of which 500 are named Cyrus, and then half of them are in that office, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. In fact, uh, we had three Rohits and four Cyruses, so we even outbeat the who other, the, commu Rohits? the majority community, who I won't name. <laughs> huh? Who were the Rohits? I can't remember surname, but what kind of interview is this? All you ask me is details like an Aadhaar card. I mean, I'm what? Uh, oh, I, God knows. What other way can we do this? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah you know. Uh, I got it. I got okay, it. Okay, I'm going to get a little. Um, you know? Yeah. Okay, go on. <laughs> Since it's the flavor of the chat. Oh, yeah. And we're not supposed yeah, to yeah. say things that huh. sound like that. And I'm actually, oh, so I don't drink. So the, the day ends faster. You don't drink? Yeah, I don't drink alcohol anymore. So, so there's no evening culture for me unless I have to work. So if there's an event or some job or some some Zoom thing or whatever, otherwise I'm, the evening is free. So how come how come you don't drink anymore? It's a, I drank too much and then I, my daughter said enough and you know I, I, I've been in lockup three times, Brian, three times and twice after joining MTV and vaguely being known. So it was embarrassing because I asked women. I remember editor Bombay Times called up my wife at three in the morning and said uh, my crime reporter is saying that he's in corporate police station and got into some fight at library bar and this and that. And so I've had a few scrapes which I don't remember properly, you know, so it's embarrassing. So yeah. that's what prompted you to... I'm just telling you the ones that I do re vaguely remember, there are many more. So then I just had to stop because the behavior was very bad. We need to chat offline. I was I more like a Rajya Sabha member than a Lok Sabha member at some point. You know, I was just doing whatever I yeah. could. Yeah. I couldn't do it anymore. Makes two of us. But you also stopped, which is yeah. good. Yeah. Both these uncles, kids watching, both these uncles drank too much and misbehaved. Um, misbehaved as in uh, not with the ladies really. You don't drink anymore, we still yeah. misbehave. Yeah, well, I only misbehave till about 5.36, then I'm done. In the morning? No, no, in the evening. Don't make oh. fun about my misbehaving. This is the only <laughs> time I have and I, I cling to it. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so Cyrus, I don't even know if I should be asking you this, but let me. Please. Okay. You've lived a colorful life. You've had a fun... Are you killing me? You've had a fun journey. Who says that? Yeah, I was It's like I've got one week to go, doctor. Plan, we must doctor, make, tell me the truth. We must make happened? it ceremonious, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going. yeah, yeah. Is there anything you want to share, uh, you know, with the viewers, listeners? Yeah, I, I think in Mumbai, growing up in this business, especially the TV line, uh, there's an overindulgence in poha. I can't bear that in the morning. I, I've got nothing against uh, breakfast of certain communities or whatever. But I felt, you know, I feel ostracized. I had to wait for a guy called Willie to come, you know, uh, and join me. And then we would, uh, I would be two. Otherwise, you, all the time, this is Pua and Upma and, uh, and the Idli and Menduwara. I'm like, okay, you know, but you know, every day, I mean, oh God. So there, there were moments when I, I said, why didn't I have my own, like, you know, business where I could have my own food and all that. I felt a little ostracized here and there. Also, I live in South Bombay and all the work was this side. So it was always, I would travel with the unit, but generally I wouldn't travel back with the unit. Because I, I, we'd get off before they pack up and all that. So then I travel alone coming back. So there was and no mobile phone. So a lot of fun with taxi drivers. But uh, So that's your sharing? Yeah, I'm just trying to give you anecdotes that I remember. Now, any advice you'd like to hand? Uh, oh, how can, I'm, uh, there's no credibility to give advice. And nobody wants to listen to you, you know. I, I think the best thing is not to actually preach to anyone. So I avoid that as far as possible. It's very embarrassing when they call you as chief guest. Because they give you this, have, have you, Brian, you must have experienced that. With the, the, they have this whole list of achievements which you've never heard of. Yeah. Because they'd call my mother who still thinks I'm a nine-year-old child. And, you know, the, uh, he won the potato race in second standard. He came third in elocution and beat uh, Philomena in the finals of the table tennis tournament. I mean, you know, really? And they've listened. And it's a page one. Huh? It's like, it goes on. And then every single person they've interviewed and every Rotary Club, because Rotary Club doesn't pay you, they give you some stupid award, which you can't return immediately. You've given after three days. So I thought it was very painful. So I hate the chief guest introduction. So I always tell them whenever there's a chief guest thing and you're forced to do it, just keep it like three lines, you know, uh, like worked in television or radio. Just don't say more than that, you know, because it's really embarrassing yeah. because they think, you know, they expect suddenly, you know, what the hell is this? Is Roger Federer or Djokovic walking up, you know, because he's won so many things, but he's won nothing. nothing. It's, it's embarrassing. You're so capable of being eloquent and, you know. I'm very happy to do my own introductions. They won't do it. No, 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 sir. Let us, because they... They couldn't find a better chief guest. So they have to make you look important for themselves to validate the show. Correct. Because they can't put me down now because the whole show sucks then because their True. chief guest is a prick. True. You know? So that's the problem. Yeah. So, so there's nothing you want can we to charge? Can anyone? we charge as chief guest? I think we should charge. Of course you can. Then I don't care. I didn't talk for three days. Yeah, yeah exactly. Whatever. That you do anyway. Oh, what? Life really is horrible. Really? What, do you, what do you want me to share with the younger people? Um, only one thing irritates me with the podcast. The younger people I work there is that they're never on time. I don't know what to do about that. There's something to do with discipline, bad parenting. I don't know why that happens, you know. And especially early morning calls. How do you miss an early morning call? If it's 9 a.m., why are you there at 9.45? True. I mean, because there's nothing happened before that. So there's no reason. Yeah, and we had a little rain the other day. Was it yesterday? Everybody came late. It didn't warrant it. The Western line was yeah. slightly delayed. No, but this is ridiculous because people who weren't connect The guys who came late mostly live in Bandra Khar. They didn't have to. They had to walk or take a rickshaw. Nothing more. It's ridiculous. No, no, I know. It's... Uh... It's one of the biggest. I challenges. hate youngsters. I yeah. can't stand them. No, I can't stand them. I couldn't stand them in MTV also, but I, I had to pretend I could. Yeah. You give birth to a couple. Uh, yeah, but God, they're painful. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, my kids see me as an ATM. Yeah, basically that's it. And uh, if I don't, uh, you know, if this ATM doesn't work, I don't know what they'll do to me. Brian, be careful, huh? Make sure it's coming in. Uh, would you blame me? Yeah. Would you blame me for wanting a volume two on this chat on Tell Us Like It Is? Right? Don't you believe? That this man sitting with me is so full of priceless information but, and sharing. Uh, the life of Brian tells me one thing. Uh, I don't think, you know, the problem is that we're part of this pop culture. Not you. Because you're, you're a little better. You're a little more credible. Because you've done, real, you've done far more, you know, the events are more serious than you've done. But I'm saying for me, I can't, I, I feel very uncomfortable. I'm not going to be modest or something. I feel very uncomfortable preaching to someone. But what do I tell them? Because we just, you know, act our way through it as we're doing here in the interview. So it's a little difficult to tell people because they want uh, people coming to airports and uh, that's why I like Kunal uh, because he's more blunt than I am. And they'll come and say, sir, uh, I want to be VJ, I want to be actor, I want to be creative, I want to be podcaster, whatever, whatever. And I never say, I say, yeah, you must do this, that. And I lie through my bum because I know they're going nowhere in life. But Kunal looks at the guy who says, I want to be actor. You're not good looking enough here. <laughs> and that guy, you can see his whole life flashes before him and he feels so bad. But in a way, maybe it's good. Because then he can at least have self-doubt finally and go back. Because what are the chances, right? Go to Lokanwala, any of the cafes there. There are 99, uh, 40 plus year olds who are still trying to make it in Big Boss. But it's not going to happen, right? And then suddenly you're 53 and washed up. So it's painful. 
So, so yeah, so there are more advice want to give to be them. energized, want to be motivated, especially about podcasting and radio and anchoring and television. You know whom to go to next time, right? Kunal. Yeah, Kunal. I Jekar. couldn't be more clear. Not Cyrus <laughs> Brocha. Straight okay. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But what do you think? Something that, that honestly, it's, I, I, you know, I fired him the first time. But then later on, I was thinking, maybe it's better because we're lying to them. Everybody lies to everybody, right? You don't want to break somebody's, you don't want to be the bad guys. You don't want to say anything. A guy comes up to you. This is like the roadies culture. I, I had to, Nickel felt sick. I had to do some other crap also. I mean, the guys, some of them are really sad. I mean, you know, they need psych psychological evaluation and help from a clinical point of view. And then, you know, because the ideas are, the questions would be like, what do you want to be with, uh, when you grow up? And he says, roadies. Or, what do you want to do next? Mujhe roadies karna hai. Or roadies ke aage karna hai. And then, bas, wo kafi hai. So that's actually the thinking. You know, they're, they're not trying to be funny or, you know, flip into anything. They're actually thinking that. So what do you do? And there's no medication in that part of the world that works. <laughs> I tried that as well. So I don't know, maybe it's good to be blunt. Medication for Kunal Vijaykar is Cyrus Brocha. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Can't get rid of perfect that. combination. He's, he's more like Art Garfunkel to my Paul Simon. I would say that. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's a really deep one. We'll save that for volume two. Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll take, it'll take at least about an hour for you to explain that really profound statement. I don't think we'll stick with any topic. No? Except the one I use on my hair. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I suffered more than you guys did on this one. That's You've it? You've got to believe me. Yeah. To call me all the way on. Unless you have something Happy Guri Padwa. Unless you have something. You want to stay in Maharashtra? Wish. <laughs> yeah. Happy Guri Padwa. Too late now. I want to it stay doesn't sound sincere. Hmm. <laughs> I thought, you know, Brian, just so that we reform our communities, let's start saying Jai Christmas. What do you think? Oh, man. Jai Christmas. Oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. That is so <laughs> And the clever. immigration officer says, stay. <laughs> Granted. <Yeah>. One more year. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the jail superintendent <laughs> that does it? Oh, yeah. As long as they'll give me poha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, vada pav. Oh, I like vada pav. I can't eat pav because I'm a recovering diabetic, so that's a bit of a problem. Oh, okay. But um, mm, I like anything potato. I just don't like poha. I really don't like no. poha. Top 10 worst foods. I don't want to lie. I want to be like Kunal in this case. Because people always lie. You land up in somebody's house, they'll say, I got poha. Everybody says, wow, wow. Even those who don't like it. I'm the only one who says, ah, oh. immediately. I thought I'd get Is it wrong friend. to just be honest about food you like or don't like? How, my, my wife keeps telling me you can't treat food like that. But how does how can you not be like passionate in your hate as well as your love? It goes together. Well, Tell, my friends, Brian, what do you hate? What food do you hate? Because there's got to be foods you hate. Tell the truth. Your son is watching you, man. I don't hate any food. You're lying. You sound like Aisha, except her mustache is bigger. <laughs> now come on, honestly, tell me which food you hate. There's got to be something. No, I, I, you ask your wife. Scott doesn't he hate something? When you, there's some food that we don't like it, you don't like it, bro. It's not a personal thing. No, no, I know, I know. What do they, what do they make it? I don't so they say you're not showing respect to the food and all. No, but we don't like the taste. What are we going to do? There's got to be food. Come on, some other cuisine. We want to be safe. You live in India, fair enough. Let's go to Thailand or wherever. Oh, Thailand. Love the food. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me a country. Food for thought. Yeah, give me a country. <laughs> Somewhere in Eastern Europe, there must be something we don't yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. And you're looking so serious and, you know, motivated. It's a passion about... for me. I want to fight this fight about why we can't, uh, you know, Air our views on food. Yeah. You I know, well, this woke culture has to end. Oh, yeah. disrespect food. What a disrespect. I don't like the taste. Yeah. I agree with no. you. And sometimes I don't like the girl. I don't like this guy. I mean, I don't like that culture. I don't like that community. I don't and like that with reason. That we come to the end. Fucking that way. <laughs> with that, we come to the end of the life that wasn't. Yeah. Featuring Cyrus Brocha. And for all of you who didn't get that, well, join the club. I'm the president of I didn't get that club. Okay. Thanks for joining us on Tell Us Like It Is. And Cyrus, thank you so much, man. For all you say or don't say, you know, depending on, you know, who's listening to this, if they are at all listening to this telecast. Right, I just remember you smiling at the back of the bar. Huh? <laughs> and uh, we, we had some wild times. Where nobody will believe it looking at the two uncles now. But yeah, we did have some wild times. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did. He was married, I wasn't. So... <laughs> Off the hook. I'm just glad my wife's not listening or watching. This. They never watch anything we yeah. do. So we have to say what we want about them. They will never watch it. They're, I mean, they've got YouTube, the internet out there. We're going to turn, watch our stuff. We're safe. Keep okay, going. I hope those cameras are being put off after this. Thanks for tuning in to tell us like it is. It was your mistake, okay, for tuning in. But hey, for those of you who are suckers for punishment, there's more to come on tell us like it is. Thank you for joining us. Yes.
नेक्स्ट वीक हुड वी हैव कुणाल विजय